What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career mode here on PCM and looking at our team we now have three riders at 75 or above with Marcus Hulegaard becoming a 76 overall and Captain Price now a 77 time trialist. He could be still 23 years old, one of the better T tiers in the world very soon. But we did just see it there, Magnus Court Nielsen not feeling too well at the moment, uh, hopefully nothing too serious. But today we are now into June, we are a few weeks ahead of where we were in the previous episode. We do have some races to recap very shortly, but today we will be playing live towards Hageland. We have Mont Ventoux and the Balouise Belgium Tour potentially, as well as the National Championships. We are basically going to be playing up to the Tour de France in today's episode. Before then though, I do want to talk about the transfers a little more because we have added a couple riders since I last showed you guys the dossiers. I've added more riders from our team to add to Kron Skelmosa and you will see David Borgen who is a Norwegian stage racer. He is a new gen, he's not a real rider, he has been generated in game and he looks like a superb talent. Only 19 years old and he has that potential of 5 to 8 according to Knud Knudsen. So I'm very excited about the prospects of having a new Norwegian stage racer in the team with that 70 mountain. And that is also because we have Peter Mogensen right now. He is a new gen. He looks a bit better on paper, a little older as well, but he has a one to four potential I've noticed. So we can't really expect him to become a top uh, a top rider competing for Grand Tours, essentially, he's more likely to become a domestique in the future. So that's the reason I'm trying to still invest in some big GC talents. But anyway, we did head to the Tour of Hungary earlier in the episode for a sprinter's race, really. I'll show you guys what happened right now. So obviously, with so many flat stages as part of the parkour, I brought a couple sprinting options. I did think that Soren Rangegold would be our lead option. However, he was on a poor race day to start. He led out Blikra and he led him out to victory. Ahead of the likes of Garcia Cortina there, really good effort by the team. And on to stage two, you can see our guys on the front absolutely dominating proceedings under the Flamme Rouge. Wernish Gold again on lead out duties, this time for Hulgard. And that was a Michael Morkov lead out right there. That was absolutely on a plate for Hulgard. Ah, oh, just perfect from Wernish Gold. Couldn't have been better. Anyway, on to stage three. Trying to make it a treble. This time, finally, we give Warren Gold the chance to ride for himself and sprint for himself, taking on Garcia Cortina. But Garcia Cortina just about pips Warren Gold. Really good effort. And again, heading to stage four. Warren Gold is back on lead out duties, getting a little boxed in on the left hand side. We find our way to snake through. And this time, Blikra again with a Michael Morkov type lead out, just delivered to the line. And Blikra finishes things off for his second stage win of the race. He will be uh, in the leader's jersey entering the final stage again. Warren Gold, the MVP of this race for us so far, leads out Blikra to a hat trick of victories. A rider we haven't really used too much at all so far in our career, but he wins the Tour of Hungary and largely thanks to Søren Rangegold. Like I said, an MVP performance. And following that, I have also played the Tour of Norway off camera. So we did have some hills there, mostly flatter stages though. Again, I will show you guys what happened right now. So obviously on home terrain, we definitely want to deliver a fine result for Uno X, but we did have some good opposition and you can see just up the road, Hal Vorsen going for the line, Hulgard as well, but just up the road this is Total Energies and NASA Buwani who snatches victory. He's going to be a bit of an arch nemesis throughout this race for us, I'm afraid. We tried to press it on this climb on stage two because I know Buwani is here. I know he's not the best climber in the world. I want to uh, try and put him in a little difficulty if I can. All our guys going for the line. We've beaten Buwani, but Roman Siegler is the man to defeat us instead. Oh my word. The French teams have come to Norway and are really spoiling the fun for us so far. Anyway, on to stage three, we, you can see we do have an attack here. I decided to try and cover this one with Anders Scarset, our road captain 
captain really rarely gets the chance for himself and I thought what an opportunity this is becoming to snag his first real big result for the team but we do have a few riders attacking up to us uh, bridging that gap late on and I didn't realise Nasi Buani was actually one of them and you can see that right now he absolutely streaks away in the sprint and wins his second stage of the Tour of Norway and after three stages we are still winless at our home tour it's a bit of a disaster so far anyway aside from chasing the GC and of course uh, the stage victories I am trying to chase the KOM jersey with Ida Anderson he actually won that at the Tour of Hungary as well he's going to win it here picking up plenty of points from the breakaway but that is not all he's going to acquire from the breakaway he is going to hold off the peloton drop his colleagues from the breakaway and win stage four of the Tour of Norway solo what's a victory for Ida Anderson and finally we break our duck again on to stage five, we have a little hill late on. I press it up the climb, try to put Buani in a little bit of difficulty if we can. He's here though, to Hal Forsen's right. Hal Forsen goes for the line. Carlos Barbero, I think that is coming late, but Hal Forsen, finally we win a sprint of the Tour of Norway. It was so, so close. But you can see heading onto the final stage, I did drop off the wheel of Marcus Hulegaard. I was doing a big lead out. I realized a few of our guys uh, didn't really have the energy and Hulegaard suiting this punchy finish. We made the other teams close that gap and Marcus Hulegaard wins with ease. So after struggling over the first three stages, we do win three stages of our home tour despite Nasi Buani winning the GC. But today, bring it back to the live commentaries. We have Dwarves, Dorhet, Hagelands. I think Rasmus Tiller may have won this race in 2021 in real life. Wout van Aert and Peter Sagan are here this time. So a repeat of that, very unlikely indeed. So I have decided to avoid the breakaway today. We will be trying to bring this in for a sprint, probably for Marcus Hulegaard. He's on great form. So we have managed to control this one pretty nicely so far today. And we are now on the front of this group. Brent Van Moor is going on the attack. Let's pop those gels for the rest of our guys too. But like I said, it will be Marcus Hulegaard sprinting for us today. Let's put Kulsat maybe up to 92. Keep him right at the front and in position. Is Grunewagen going to lead out Wout van Aert? Let's see. But here we go. Brent Van Moor is still trying to hold on. He will be just about caught here though. Coming right into our train on the left hand side. Really? Are you sure? Brent Van Moer about that. Now, Kusa, what, what is going on here? Blocking our own riders right now. I think we're about to turn right towards the finish. Ida Anderson trying to keep Russell and Hulegaard to the front. Here we go. 1.6k to go. Hulegaard trying to hold on into the final kilometre. There is Wout van Aert. We're going to grab his wheel. We're going to try and follow and come through into the finish, but it will be Wout van Aert holding off Bauhaus and Hulegaard. We get a very respectable top three here today though. The rainbow jersey is often cursed in cycling but the European Champions jersey is certainly not for Wout van Aert this season. He cannot stop winning 11 victories already and he is first in the World Tour rankings. So we do have one more classic in Belgium today before heading to Mont Ventoux. Let's give it our best shot again. Marcus Ulgaard, probably our leader today. Man, every time I see Rasmus Queda, now Vastana, I remember that painful Danish championships from last season. Anyway, Ida Andersen is trying to join the breakaway today and it looks like he has been successful. Okay, 19k to go. We do have an attack. It's Gianni Moscon, Eva Lampert, Ahmed again as well. It's a very, very good move up the road. Should have probably followed Follow myself, uh, but we are going to have to work to bring that group in now. Okay, we have 6k to go in this race. Wrestle is completely done. Can I put an attack here with Marcus Hulegaard? We'll try and follow Eve Lampert. That has to be the tactic. And Eve Lampert is an absolute rocket ship on the flat and on the cobbles. So that is a great wheel to have. And we have gone clear here with Eve Lampert. Only 4k to go. I will work with the Belgian man. But oh, he sits up just at the wrong moment. We have six riders who have gone clear here. 40 seconds is our gap. Can we hold on for victory? I am going to pace this in, I think, up to 72, 2k to go now. Are the other group going to catch us? They're not far behind. They are coming, you know, into the final kilometer. Let's go for the line. There goes Lampard. Hulegaard tries to hold him off. We have Devrient Moscon here as well. But Yves Lampard is going to just about 
win the race ahead of Devriant. It's another third place for Marcus Soldergaard. Fun to be competing with these guys. A shame we couldn't go clear solo with Yves Lampard right there. Would have been a nice finish to the race. Nonetheless, he won in the end. So uh, he won't be complaining at all. And a fun one up next because I don't think we're going to win the Move 1 2 challenge this season. Adam Yates is here, Carapaz is here, and Lanza is here. All of the Ineos Grenadiers. Same for Martinez. Sosa. Oh my word, Port I thought was at Ineos as well. It's literally Ineos, the favourite screen. Okay, if Ineos don't win this race, it's going to be a stinker from them. From us, we're just trying to give some riders a chance, really, and build up with a few, such as Tour de Garde to the Tour de France. So the first step today is to try and stack as many riders in the breakaway as possible. That task, though, could be quite difficult. Sadly, though, only Christian Coulson in the breakaway from us. You can see the rest of the guys up the road. But yeah, I hope we would be in a slightly stronger position here than having a 60 mountain rider up the road. So in this edition of the Mont Von 2 Challenge, we actually go up one time to Chalet Reignard. So this this is going to be a very very selective race we already have pretty much three riders left with any energy as Kulsa has been caught from the breakaway but yeah this first climb basically going halfway up or just over halfway is going to cause chaos here we go then the final ascent of Mont Ventoux gets underway we're gonna try and play it quite sensible here Skelmoser on the attack let's scout the man and see what he can do today because we want him in our team next season but Dylan Toon's attacking up to his teammate Scott Davis very sensible move right there by Bahrain for us though it is Marcus Hulgaard in the best position Mogensen has been blocked off a little bit but we still have plenty of riders here to support still though 100 riders plus in the main peloton as Dylan Toons has attacked Skelmosa at the front of the race. I've tried to keep pace with Mogensen. We are now going out the back though. Still though, we do have 30 riders ahead of us up the roads and 8.5k to go. Carapaz has made a move. I think we're just going to trundle up the climb and see if we can maybe get a top 15. That'll be a good goal. So we are pressing into the final 2k ourselves, trying to make a comeback on a bunch of riders, but you can see there's so many riders still ahead of us. It has been an Enios masterclass today. It will be Adam Yates winning a top Mont Ventoux with uh, Lanza and Carapaz waiting in the wings just behind. So we have made a good comeback on most of the riders ahead of us. I wish you could turn off the Salomo uh, on PCM at the finishes because it's not ideal. Anyway, let's see across the line, we get 16th, just missing out on that objective. But next up, we do take on the Balouise Belgium Tour. Definitely a race which suits us a little more than uh, the race on Mont Ventoux. We have a TT to start, sprint stage. Most of them are fairly flat apart from stage four, which is definitely the queen stage of the race. Should be a fun one, especially considering it is a sponsor objective as well. They want a top five overall i believe and the team we bring features hooligard again definitely trying to ramp up his preparation for the tour de france and leading us here uh, we have plenty of good riders i think it will be wearing gold most likely in the sprints as well but in the tt i can already see ghana van arts and Roglic are here nice and easy start then well it's a shame that soren wearing gold isn't quite feeling it today he's on a minus two could have definitely challenged for this stage, or at least a good result, not even in the top five already. But looking quickly at the full start list, just so you can see before the race gets underway, it is supercharged. We have so many good riders here GVA, Lampart, Shackman, Kung, so many strong teams with Welfanart and Roglic as well. Pretty absurd, if you ask me. But Nicholas Larson could be in with a chance for a good result. It's a plus four day for Larson, sprinting to the line, but just beaten by Moscon and Roglic so far. And by the way, a few of you have mentioned Søren Heinzer, who we spotted as a potential rider for our team. He has a contract with Corinzen Circus for uh, two years, so until 2023. We can't sign him this season, maybe next season. A very, very interesting rider to keep an eye on as Hulagard is now underway for us. And he is going to cross the line 24 seconds down. And Stefan Kung, surely one of the stage favourites, is not going to get near. Seven seconds down right here. We have Pippo Ganna and Wout Van Aert on course. Let's see Ganna. He does take the best time from his fellow teammate and Italian, but Wout Van Aert, the final rider, the double European champion, is going to spoil the fun. So Nicholas Larson just pushed out the top 10 in the end, but really, really good time 
by our 25 year olds and uh, yeah, pretty solid start to the race for us. And a flat one today into Norka Heist, which is where actually I think the time trial started at the recent World Championships and guess who is the favourite again today. So I will try Hulgaard in the breakaway today, but I'm pretty sure this will be coming in for a mass sprint with Werenshi Gold on a very good day as well. And look who we're up the road with. It's none other than, I think, a 40-year-old Philippe Gilbert. And we're out sprinting Philippe Gilbert in the intermediate sprint. Oh, this is crazy. A former world champion. So I've tried to hold on with Hulgaard. These guys not really working with me. Let's give up 7k to go and focus on Soren Werenshi Gold's chances in today's sprint. They should be pretty good as well on this plus three. We have 77 sprint, 74 acceleration. And now we have Julius, Jimmy, Johansson coming to the front in Knocker Heist 4. K to go. Let's go 95. I think we can do that. Where are our rivals? Not where, not really sure where Wout van Aert is. Much further back right now. He is definitely out of position. Spiragli, Brian Kokar, they are moving up two and a half. K to go. We do have a couple corners here, which means we can probably sprint here with Hulagard. Where in goal? Guess it. Oh. Werenschgold with the worst block possible. Hulgaard's going to sprint for our result today. And Cockard is going to win it. Damar second. We get third with Hulgaard. But I'm gutted for Werenschgold there. Yep, that's an absolute stinker. An absolute stinker. Probably left it too late to sprint. Um, but yeah, that block was just horrendous. Werenschgold given no chance. Another pretty flat one today. A couple of cobbled sections as well. But I really expect a mass sprint. And why not? Let's try and get Jonas Abrahamson in today's breakaway. And in the breakaway, we are alongside Hills Van Hoeker and Stein Steele. So two pretty good Belgian riders join us here. We'll try and get the jump on them at this intermediate sprint. And I think it's just about going to come off with that uh, with those points. And the tempo behind is really starting to explode. But he suddenly have 64 riders in the main group. And look at the number of riders who have been caught behind over these cobbles. So 30k to go. It's not a big gap to the breakaway anymore. It's 1 minute and 20 seconds. Let's make sure we're following any attacks right now. In fact, let's put in the first attack at this KOM again. We are going to try and uh, secure our position in this uh, in this jersey provisionally. And I think we are again going to be the best puncher of this group. So I think this jersey is all but secured, guys. So I was a little slow to react that time. It's not going to matter though. We are just too good for Stein Steels and Van Helker today, who I think is struggling to hold on. Shall we push it over the top? Nope. Let's set up because we need to regenerate. The next KOM is literally just there. So downhill we go, trying to recover as much energy as possible. I'm going to try and jump these guys right now into the foot of the climb. Steels tries as well a, uh, a similar tactic, but you can see Van Halker is done. And I think Steels is just not going to be able to live with Abrahamson today. What a ride by the Norwegian. We are going to win the KOM jersey by a mile. And here we go. Abrahamson is going to be caught on this cobbled sector right here. And Ressa was coming right to the front for our team. We look great on the cobbles for very, very capable cobbled riders right now on the front. And look at this. We can really try and blow up this race a little bit. 10k to go. We have really, really blown things up here today. We literally have 32 riders at the front of the race. I'm not quite sure who is caught behind. If there's any Big GC favourites. We'll check, I guess, after the stage. Let's focus on this sprint finish. Romschgold not feeling too great, but I think he's going to be okay. So Morton Hulgaard has put in a fabulous ride today. But here come the Corundon Circus boys, I guess, for Soren Heinzer. Anyway, Romschgold is in the prime position on the prime wheel of Marcus Hulgaard up to 99. He can kick into the final kilometre and a half. Romschgold can go now as well into the corners. Damar is right here, though. Can our guys hold on? Come on, boys. Hold off, Damar. It's not going to happen. Arnold Damar is going to win this stage. And I think Hulagard, is it going to be bonus seconds? Yes, another third place for him in a very selective stage in the end. An awesome stage of the Balouise Belgium Tour today. We blow up the race completely. You can see only 31 in the end at the front of the race. The likes of Covey, Ruch, Yves Lampart, good riders who could have contended have been dropped today. But it is Brian Cockard going into the lead of the race. And obviously the KOM jersey as well. A nice thing to have for Abrahamson. In the meantime though, our boys, our dev boys, have been racing at the under 23 Giro d'Italia. And David Borgen, who I did mention earlier, or, or David Borgen, I guess you say, uh, was fifth. Only a minute down in the end. We also have this rider right here, a puncher 
interesting rider. He's 22 years old though, so I'm not sure he's quite as high on my bucket list, but nice to see Borgen with a good result right there. Did he take a stage? I saw him uh, second on one stage. No, he didn't take a stage, but uh, nice to see him doing well in the GC there. And here it is, the queen stage of this race should be very, very exciting indeed. So many hills, it's going to be pretty manic, let's get it. So certainly not the best set of race day conditions for us today, but hopefully we can uh, really improve our tactical position by putting Johannesson up the road to help Abrahamson as well. So having those two riders there to try and secure that KOM jersey. And I'm not sure some teams are too happy with the situation. We do have 12 riders up the road. I know Bob Youngles is one of them, so... Uh, uh, two knots as well. It's a pretty good group right now. Hopefully we can just hold on to this gap though. And still, Luca Mazzato and Timo Rosen are tampering. Luckily, he is finally done on the front. Let's try and lead out Abrahamson for this KOM right now. Abrahamson up to 99. Let's go on the attack right now. Can we beat Vermont? No, it's going to be second. That's fine. Uh, adding up the points to uh, add to our massive lead already. But for some unfathomable reason, B&B Hotels are just so unhappy with this breakaway. They're the only team as well, uh, which means we have to keep working with Johansson up the roads. Okay, I think they've finally given up. Madawas has attacked from that group, a very, very capable rider. We saw that at the recent World Championship, so uh, we can probably start to slow up a little bit. So it seems Julian Vermeult is definitely our biggest opponent for this KOM jersey today, but I think we're gonna be uh, hopefully able to dispatch with him pretty easily like we did there. And this is just awesome. We are now entering the Cote de la Redoute. This is a massively important climb in Liège, Baston Liège, for those of you who don't know Abrahamson. Uh, I think he's about to get dropped from this group. Let's try and stay to the front though uh, with Abrahamson as Johansson, I think I misspoke, uh, is going to get dropped here. Valentin Madawas is proving to be our biggest rival for this KOM jersey. He is winning every sprint by an absolute mile at the moment. So I think our best tactic is just to try and follow Madawas somewhat and pick up the points behind him exactly like we did right there because we simply don't have the punch to match him. We just have to hold on to our advantage. But luckily for us, the breakaway have now been caught bar Bob Youngles, who has gone solo and uh, he should sweep up the main KOM points. So we should be okay, I think, with Abrahamson. Oh, and a big crash. Bad time to crash as well for Alessandro Covey and Max Shackman right there. I really want to get to the front uh, before we enter the Cote de la Redoute with Hallgaard and that is exactly what I have been able to do. This is perfect positioning. And over the Cote de la Redoute, we can probably press on because 23 riders are at the front. Some riders have really been caught out right here. We can try and press on with Larson at least. He's pretty done though and Hallgaard looking very good today. And Shackman's still trying to get back in but he's still behind uh, after Kovey tried to help him. 36 are left at the front. But Maxi Shackman looks like Superman today. He has uh, come back to the group and attacked out the front. Roglic is going as well. De Ghent is going to relay. I'm going to try and stay sat in. We have lost Larson. We've lost Hulgard. We're down to 22 in the peloton. Wout van Aert is still here. So uh, as long as he's here, I think we're in a good place. So seven and a half K to go. We are coming to the decisive ending of the race. Wout van Aert and Roglic are here. Sepkus is done. Uh, there we have Brent van Moer with the first attack. I'm not going to follow. Uh, I don't really want to relay him in either. Let's force Roglic and others into to doing that. Let's go up to 93 and try and follow these attacks. Primoz Roglic though on the hills. Is he stoppable? I don't think so. Oh and Wout van Aert is sat on our wheel using us perfectly with Roglic up the road. I have made that effort though uh, with four gear to go to close that gap. 25 at the front again and it's stalemates. Okay two and a half K to go. Wout van Aert surely is the wheel to be in. Let's try and stay right there. Oh well, this is so difficult. Roglic is going though. Roglic is going and of course Wout van Aert is going to wait behind. Perfect tactics by Jumbo Visma into the final kilometer. Let's give everything to the line. I don't think it's going to be stage victory today. Uh, Wout van Aert is going to claim that of course. Should have stayed on his wheel in the end. Shackman will be second just ahead of Roglic. For Marcus Ulgar though another very very good result. We're just going to be outside the top three. I think fifth place today. Seemingly there will be no beating Wout van Aert and Jumbo Visma at the Balois Belgium Tour. Really fun stage today though. Quite selective. Only 20 riders at the front. We're still though missing out on a place in the top 10 in the GC but we do still Still hold very good job today at defending that KOM jersey. And the final stage will be a sprint one and of course Wout van Aert is the favourite. So I did consider joining today's 
breakaway and they are still out front. Nikki Terpstra in that group. We are just about going to catch them, I think, before the line. Five kids go. And again, we are right at the front of proceedings. We have Decker here, Coy as well, to help out maybe Wout Van Aert, unless he goes for himself. But again, we find ourselves right at the front of the race. Three kids go. Let's put Morton Hall guard on a plus four day to the front. And surely with his 79 flat, no one is going to be able to come round. Here goes Marcus Hordegaard, 1.5k to go. I've probably gone too early though. Yeah, way too early. Way, way too early. Koka is going to try. It's going to be Aniakovsky. A good effort today. I think we'll end third place. But Aniakovsky wins it for Air Belgium, which used to be Bingo, I believe. Not bad, not bad at all. Top three again, but we did fail to win a stage at this race. Third was our best result. We couldn't even get in the top 10 in the GC, but that was mainly due to Hallegaard's opening time trial, uh, which cost him there. Anyway, he was third as well in the points jersey, whilst Abrahamson is the winner clearly of the beautiful KOM jersey. So that is a blotch on our sponsor board, missing out on that top five by quite some way. Only a half star objective, but in the next episode, we will have three massive, massive objectives at the national championships again. Yes, in the next episode, we will take on the NCs before the Sword of France and also uh, maybe cover some transfer news as well. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. It won't be a super long episode. It'll be out very soon as well. And then guys, we will be in to our first Grand Tour, the Tour de France. And to end today, we are seventh in the Super Prestige standings, looking very, very nice. I mean, where is the next Conti Pro team? 19th, we are seventh. So doing so, so well still in our second season. Anyway, that is going to round it out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did down below. Really, really helps the channel out. Let me know what you thought in the comments and drop a sub if you're new. I will see you guys in the next one. Oh,